Hello and welcome to the Adirondack Mountains in New York State. We're at Lake Placid for the season opening race weekend of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup on this site that has twice held the Olympic Games in 1980 and in 1932. This modern track though is our playground since 2000 and it is one of the greatest driver's tracks on the planet. Hello everybody, I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, Lake Placid resident John Morgan, who knows this track as well as any other. It's a great challenge for the drivers. Great challenge for the drivers, and the beauty of this track is all the money New York State's put into Burn it, it to put a roof on it. This is John Napier, the track manager. When have we ever had a track manager <laughs> drive the pilot sled? And the P he's driving the POV, the POV sled here. The pilot sled, he'll bring it down to check everything. Never had that. John's the 2010 Olympian, born and raised on this track. Pretty appropriate that he's managing the ice. And if there's anybody who knows the ice on this track, it's he. He won an event here in 2009. Hey, all these this Devil's Highway part of the track. What a trick spot right here, six and seven, but they've. It's pretty tame we've seen so far in the skeleton events. Exit is shady, shady two, about 70 miles an hour into the three corner combination, the labyrinth. Now curve 14, Benham's Bend, named after the Lake Placid native who won two silver medals in Oslo in 52. I love New York, about 77, maybe 80 miles an hour. 17, 18, those two corners you can't overlook. Then the finish going in uphill, there's still some action left. There's the finish high right there. There's the track record. Jamie Grubel, now retired, married uh, German Bob Slutter Poser. She lives over there. And uh, Martin, we saw some exciting racing in Luge last weekend. We saw some exciting racing in Skeleton. It continues. Yeah, it sure does. Napier and his crew have had a very busy start to the season. The week before last was North America's Cup, plus the qualification races for the Youth Olympic Games, plus women's motto, Bob. More sleds have been down this track in October and November to this point in December than ever before by a lot, Martin. And, there, and the weather's held up. A lot to do with because early winter set in here in early November, too. Well, and the great benefit of having a roof over the track has been uh, paid back in space. There's Mariama Yamanka, our World Olympic and World Cup champion, the woman who's got definite target on her back in any discipline this season. We've got 13 sleds in our women's field this weekend. We will have more joining us when we get to Europe after Christmas. We start first week of January as we go helter-skelter through eight race weekends. There's Lisette Turner, the self-named granny of German bobsledding, 31-year-old break woman back and healthy again. So here's our start list. We have seven World Cup debutants, including two drivers, Paulina Nazaruk and Ming Ming Wai, the first two off the block, and uh, Kim Kalicki, so three drivers who have never been uh, in a World Cup race before. Never and been got, here before. Well, they've never been here before. We've got uh, four break women also who have never started a World Cup race and a little wrinkle in the field later on. We'll talk about that in a while. First race of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup and the honor of starting the season goes to 24-year-old Russian rookie Polina Nazaruk. Never raced in the World Cup before, never raced here before. She has a total of five, count them, five bobsleigh races under her belt. We asked them about what sport they came from. They were looking salted, track and field, of course. You know, and they're broken Russian or broken English. So first time we've seen him. Yep, Anna Parfenova, her first World Cup start as well. The break woman has done... 576, um, that's it. Done three World wow. Cup races last year with Najesta Sergeva. Well, it's just getting track time here, acquiring World Cup points, getting to the bottom. What a way to start your World Cup career on this you, track. You're allowed six training races before a weekend, but because you've never been here before, watch out, watch out, watch out. He was from lower you down. could see it. You could see she got in late six and seven, which is very forgiving. Watching sleds come through there all week, and the track's perfect, but she got in there way late. And track goes off the and it had a chance for it to come back up when it did. Yeah. Could have, but Martin, you were saying she took a practice run on Star three first. Yeah. So this is only her sixth trip down the well, track. It's only her fifth from the top. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and it's a tough driver's track. You know, here at Altenburg, perhaps the two toughest tracks to learn as a driver. Three German teams, all of them who medaled a couple years ago on this track, crashed in that same exact spot 
Andre Lange, the famous German pilot, used to crash there. She did not get across she the finish line. Oh, so she will not. away. And now they got to go back. Now somebody's got to catch that sled before it comes back all the way again. But, they, you know, you can't practice for crashing. So these two athletes, and I'm sure they've crashed before, but th that was driver error. You know, yeah. there was questions about the track. Uh, a couple years ago when all three German pilots crashed there that it was too late on the uh, exit that was total driver error when they show us the replay she tapped on the take on before she went in the curve went in the middle of the curve I immediately said uh oh right yeah. here to watch her come out of this this is up above this is four white face curve you see the tap there that's not too bad and then here where really the problem is she gets in there too late see that she comes right into the middle, late part of the curve, and then she had no chance. Almost comes back up right yeah. there, which you can. We've seen the sleds come back up there on their runners, but. By the time she realized she was in trouble, it was yeah. all too late. And the, you know, the pictures don't lie. She just got in the middle of that curve late. And that's the thing about this track. You can't do that. Yeah. On this track, you know, it, most tracks, it just gives you a bad time at the bottom. Here, it penalizes you with the crash. But the, both ladies up and walking, I'm so sure we'll see Dr. Jean Byrne yeah. Great woman's already got a helmet off. That's Anna Pafanova. And they're DQ'd, so we will only have, at the moment, 12 sleds. And now here comes the track crew. They're looking for gouges. They're just doing an inspection. Something may come off the sled. Yeah, and just and just where it might have taken chunks of ice out. Of yeah, the, he's of looking the right at the take-on, right where her bunk hit that pushed her down in the middle of the curve. And, uh, you know, I hope that doesn't discourage them because they're not the first or the last that no, no, have no. a chat problem in that part of the track. Listen, you've got to get back on the horse, haven't you? You crash, you get back up, and, and she'll be here next week. So she'll have more oh, training runs. Yeah. And so, you know, it's because this this is a, a carryover from what should have been the race weekend in There's Park the gouges. City See the gouges right there? That's yeah. the gouge. That might be a little bit of a hold. Well, it's a mandatory five-minute track hold, they were telling us in the, the uh, coaches' meeting on Monday after any crash. The ice is in absolutely fabulous condition. Everybody's commented on it so much during the week. Well, we had two track records in the women's luge event last weekend, track record at doubles, two track records in the men's competition, luge. The ice is perfect. Again, a lot to do with the roof on the track and the real winter conditions we've had here since November 1st. We haven't had the thaw, yep. the rainstorm, the wind. And when that type of weather used to come in on the old track, it would make it very bumpy, like yep. a washboard. Yep. And it'd be really bumpy for the athletes. And all the athletes are commenting now how it's not so bumpy anymore. Or they're also saying, of course, Luge was here last week, yep. so maybe we should follow Luge more often, <laughs> like they do at the Olympic Games. Well, Luge has a, a slightly different profiling in the corners. It's a more gradual take on and outlet to the corners because a, a Luge sled is far less stable than a skeleton or a bobsled. Because the way the weight is balanced on it has knife edges rather than rounded runners like skeleton and bobsled. So uh, the track tends to be just a fraction more forgiving in the, cr in the key areas, the take on and the outlet off the corners. So Polina Nazaruk of Russia and Anna Parfenova will come back and try again next week. So it gives them a couple of days to recover from the bumps and the bruises. And with a uh, track hold, Ming Ming Wai and uh, Jiai Huang, her breakwoman, who also are relative rookies, although they know this track better, are waiting at the top. So, the uh, Chinese athlete, uh, Ming Ming Wei, it's her second World Cup race. She's just 24 years old. She made her World Cup debut in Calgary as a warm-up to the World Championships in Whistler in February. And she also raced here in the America's Cup race. She raced in Monobob as well. As See that guy right Bob. there in the black jacket? Yeah. Andre Long, four gold medals. Guess who he's coaching? Look at the little flag on his chest. You know who he answers to? Pierre Luders, yeah. also coaching the Chinese. I asked Andre, how's your relationship with Pierre? They used to be real combatants as competitors. Absolutely. Pierre and I have a great relationship. We really enjoy our job. And the Chinese have made some unbelievable advancements in their uh, 
you know, where they've come in three years. It tends to happen. Bitter enemies on the track, once that competitive element is removed, tend to realize they've got an awful lot more in common than they do separating them. Between them, five gold medals. Yeah. Just in Olympics. Yeah. Before we get into World Championships and World Cup races. and Maybe the most two successful guys in the... In a, in a coaching lineup? About 15 Got years, to think yeah. so. So getting ready to go, Ming Ming Wai and Jia Jia Huang of China, her brake woman, 24-year-old driver, 21-year-old brake woman. Only their second World Cup race in their history. Jumped in the back of the sled like a gymnast, 5.74. Now those are the times that we're gonna see their times only because the other team that came down the crash didn't come, crumb, come across the finish line, so they're disqualified. Now watch, this is the mistake the Russians made right here. Coming up on the exit here. So no, she's the perfect exit. See the transition yep. there? That's where the Russians made their mistake. High around Shady. Now into 12, 13, and watch 11, 12. Watch these pictures right here. Oh, nice. nice again. Nice. Oh, she was caught the runner early on 14. Wow. Classes through the chicane, 131 kilometers an hour. Still not down, though. And now she is. Hard seven. take on into the heart, though, and she hits the wall as she comes up towards the timing eye. 57.38. That is 1.51 seconds off the record. Yeah, it may not have been the prettiest run, but she got it down. Hey, 81 miles an hour yeah, through the not... chicane. They show us that 12. 13, 14 combination. It, uh, I think she was in the danger zone right there too. And that's coming at you fast. You're doing 70 miles an hour and still accelerating hard through the labyrinth. The, this is their home track in North yep. America. They started here in, uh, in March and April of 15. Watch her high, now watch her the left side of your screen. Big watch height. how she hits the take on. See, and she gets pushed away there. Now watch the back end of the sled here. It's almost airborne, see a little bit? She's a little late there. You know, she's inches away from rolling into that curve. Yeah, she had to really haul it off to start with, and that slammed her into the wall. But she's down. Ming Ming Wai is our race leader. Now, another rookie duo. This is 22-year-old Kim Kalicki, the driver, and 23-year-old Vanessa Mark, the brake woman. We just met these two uh, young ladies the other day, and uh, very exciting personalities. And after she got out of her sled yesterday, her last training run, she only had four practice runs because yep. she had to go from start three. She says, I love the track, I love the track, but curve 12, I can't get through curve 12. I know what I have to do, I just can't get through there. Well, let's hope she can do it this time. Let's see what happens this time. Under 23 junior world champions. Seven, a little late there, but gets away with it. She's only had 14 races in her bobsleigh career, Kim Kalicki. Right here, Kurt comes 12. Yeah! And her great woman, Vanessa Mark, this is her sixth ever trip in a bobsleigh race. Well, she's the leader. Pretty good. No doubt. She's a German, number one. Late there, gets away with it. And she's going to take a half second off the Chinese sled that came down. Ducks her head at the finish. Nice. 56 82. That's one second off the record. It's a nice run. Kalicki only started sliding last season, so she's been really accelerating her way through the program. 5.62 start, not bad. Track record is 5.34. Lot of snow blowing around outside, not in the track. Watch the transition. This is where the Russian sled crashed, and you saw her left to right, make it right. This is her problem yep. part of the track. Might be a little bit of a mental block. She's through there, and she's got one more heat today, six more heats of practice, and four heats next week. Yeah. Before she has, she can walk out of here and say, I figured it out. Well, oh, I've survived it. I survived. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody figures out that 12. Oh, There's... Okay, next up, Brittany Reinbold to the USA, fifth in last February's race here. She was a brake woman before she started driving. USA won, she won the selection races for the US bobsleigh team. Brittany and from uh, seriously, Arkansas, her brakeman from Arlington, Texas, how about that? Third World Cup start for Sylvia Hoffman. One crash, one bronze medal with Alana Myers-Taylor, both of those, her two previous races. 63. Okay, 
So a hundredth behind Kim Kalicki and Vanessa Mark. She's been down the track 500 times, probably 300 times. A very capable driver. She needs to have good trips every time done because she gives up a lot of, at the start. Plus seven at the moment. It's a 25th World Cup race. Nice transition there. Speed. Okay, now this is where she should take it away from the German. Nice transition into the labyrinth. That's a little tidier. 132, maybe. What's she going to have here? Ooh, rattle the chicane. 1300. 131, little off. She's going to catch her. Just a fraction 17, quicker no. than the Chinese. Best said. speed, though. 131.9 there. How close will she be at the line? Within a tenth? No, 2400 back. back. Well, again, that shows even though Kim Kalicki doesn't think she's got 12 figured out, she didn't do a bad job at all. So Brittany Reinbold second, Kim Kalicki leads, Ming Ming Wei in third position. And we talked about Sylvia Hoffman breaking her two previous World Cup races for Alana Myers Taylor. Alana will be here next week. She's not competing, she is. Carrying her first baby. Might have been doing some commentary with us next week. Wow. <laughs> the transition. She lost an enormous amount of time on the bottom. She was in the teens, and next thing you know, it just popped up 24. Yeah. Below Shady, it all got a little away from her. Well, next up is the woman everybody is targeting. She's the Olympic champion, she's the world champion, she's the World Cup champion, and yet Mariya Yamanka hadn't won a race in the World Cup before last year. Well, she looked to me like she is very confident in everything she's doing. It was a surprise that she won the Olympic gold medal. She'd never medaled before. And then last year, everybody said that was a little bit of a fluke till she started winning. Martins, yesterday when I spoke to her, she had a really look in her eyes of confidence. So this could be a good season for her, the look in her eyes that I saw her last night. This was the only track last year that she didn't finish on the podium. She was fourth in the race here in February. Only 600s ahead of her teammate. That shows how good a job Kaliki is doing. The gap's coming down, that was very late. And she almost Only squares seven. it up by, with the chicane there, and that gives away speed for the rest. And still late. Oh, I don't know. I think Kalicki might be in front of her. She's got not as good speed, speed either. Right Kalicki might have the lead of the race. She does have the lead of the race. Wow. Well, I threw the commentator jinx on her, but uh, that's what the track does. It humbles you. So you make his 30th race. Martin, how good is Cup. this? Kalicki only had four or five trips down the track. She yep. just beat yamanka has been here for three years. Well, Yamanka will know she gave that away about half a dozen times down the track. That's a tie an untidy run she does not need to repeat. Mm. Late, but through. Chicane wasn't perfect. This is 14. This is the curve we just saw the back part of. Now this is the exit of that curve, and this is not how to do it. 700s lead, lost a tenth in the bottom. Where is Mariama Yamanka? Her break woman, Kira Lipperheider, in only a second ever World Cup start. She's only 19. Kim Kalicki leads from Mariama Yamanka, Brittany Reinbold. Next up, Najesta Sergeva, her 40th World Cup race, her 36th as a driver, 8th here in February. I think the door is open for her. She's had great training times. She's also had some issues on this track in the past. Start time, 63, respectable. Out of three, tap to the right, come straight, yeah. Second ever World Cup race for a break woman, 25-year-old Elena Mamedova. Comes in the Devil's Highway, it's the back end here. Ooh. Nice transition. Okay, speed we're gonna be looking for is about 113 kilometers here at the She's exit. Really close to Kalicki and only a hundredth away. Can she use her knowledge of this North American track? Two hundreds in it. She's ahead Ooh, of the world. The nose at the there. Something happened there. Well, she was rising Six, a little five. too quickly. Fifth best speed. Not gonna do it. Gave away two tenths of a second there in the heart. Fourth. Three tenths of a second in the heart. Wow. Something strange happened to that sled in the I Love New York curve, Martin. 
I don't know if it was her steering it, but something. Nose just changed direction very quickly. Did a hand slip on the D-ring? That would be extremely something. unlikely. Pressure, you know, there's a lot of G-force mm -hmm. down there. There's like four to five Gs in the takeout of that curve, but visually something jumped at me that said, that was the wrong direction. Here it is. If they go right through this, we'll see at the tap here. It's pretty much the norm. Look at the runner tips, pretty straight. Now she flies. Oh, Look at that. She flies into the curve. Look at that. In. Look at the back yeah, end of the she sled got come backed up. in sideways. The tail wow. was driving the front. That's throwing out a parachute. Yep. Okay, six sleds down. Five have completed the run. Next up, Katy Bile of Austria. First ever World Cup race here. She's raced here in the North America's Cup two weeks ago. And 18-year-old rookie Selena Leubner is her break woman. She has had one bobsleigh look, race. Look at the tape on the uh, right yep. little finger. She doesn't want to tell us how she injured that, but uh, pretty positive. Did not take training run yesterday. Took him off. She got a little bit of a flu. Had a breakout season last year with winning all sorts of Europa Cup races. And then they joined the World Cup Tour. Did she? What is she? Katy Bile, a former hurdler. Her break woman comes from American football, which is still a big thing in Germany and Austria. Her best season, her best finish last year was two fourths. Once in Calgary, yep. once in Koenigsegg. So knocking on the door. Fifth at the moment. Not a bad looking run from Katy Bile. Same skid, nicer transition though. So she's kind of in the same place as Majesta Sergeva behind Brittany Reinbolt. Fraction behind Sergeva at the moment. This will be fifth place. Ducks her head, look at that. Yep. A little confidence factor there. Fifth of five. You know? Fifth place for Cathy Bile. Would have told me that Kaliki would have been at first after five sleds. I would have bet a lot of money against that. <laughs> after talking to her yesterday with the trepidation she had about Curve 12, her first ever event, she's got four trips down the track. She's the leader. And boy, I think there's well, there's a couple other sleds that could challenge her. Right through Lake Placid. Slingshot effect off this curve. Watch the... She didn't yeah, trust it. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't Got trust away it. from her. This is down on the chicane, and look at her eyes. She's looking way ahead, looking for the take on, and then she gets a little high there yeah, above again. that BMW logo. She was knocked sideways the wrong way out yeah. of the chicane. A lot the, of skidding into that late part yeah. of the chicane that's the tail, causing them to skid onto the take on. As the tail goes left, then it really yeah. swings right as they come on. And the there's, there's four Gs. You know, you're talking 80 miles mm -hmm. an hour right there at that speed point. Jingling of China in her second World Cup race, but her break woman, 23-year-old Chunyang Lu, makes her World Cup debut. Lu has started six bobsleigh races, including the Junior Worlds, and she's never been to the same track twice, apart from her second time now here in Lake Placid. It's quite a cultural experience. 20 Chinese in the room for the headshot, followed by 25 Russians. Well, Ying made her World Cup debut in Calgary, the last World Cup race of last year, before going to the World Championships in Whistler. And she raced Monobob here in the November North America's Cup races as well. Chinese have spent a lot of time on this track. She was part of that original group that was here at 15. It shows, look, nice 16, lines, good height, great exit. Out of control. Yeah. Look at that. Doesn't even bother with going up in the lip at 12, which tells me she's steering too much. She's only, she's fifth. Yeah, top five run. Ooh, real high there. She's not steering. She's taking the Andre Lange line, or the looters line. Oh. Don't steer. I wonder if they've just locked up the steering to make it harder yeah. to turn. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> You're steering too much, therefore Listen, we're just going to tighten listen. the runs. 57-32, that's a good, solid run. She's a hundredth, hundredth behind the Austrian. Yeah. Come on, she's... These are basically, you know, new athletes in the yep. sport. <laughs> Lots of smiles, smiles as well. A little late there. You saw the transition, you saw the articulation split there, and that's, boy, she got through 12 as clean as anybody, but if you're getting through there that clean, it can't be that fast. Good lines for Chicane. 
Way too high there. Well, it's nice to sit here and take these runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only what they'll be doing later and yeah. what the coaches will be doing as well. Martina Fontaneva now for Switzerland, 20, a 33-year-old with 23-year-old Nadja Pasternak behind her, making but her third World Cup start. She was very angry with herself after the training run yesterday. She just says, I'm just not feeling myself. I was here two weeks ago at the NAC. I did great. I felt good. I had good rhythm. I just don't feel well about the track where I am right now. So only the 16th World Cup start for Martina Fontenev. And a great woman that makes only her, this is only her fourth ever bobsleigh race. Nadja Pasternak. Nice transition there. And then five, six, seven. There's ten. Now into this signature part of the track. Watch this picture. Bang. Nice. Maybe too nice. Lands it well. Square. As good again. as anybody. Good. Anybody's come through there. And that's where you carry the speed into the heart. Yeah, before you get to the uphill section. Seventh best speed, oh, okay. though, so. Top five run, though. Fourth, Fourth place. And how far out of third? Seven hundreds behind Brittany Reinbolt. Still got a couple of potential top three sleds to That's come. That's the best sled we've seen come through the chicane. Yep. That speed we're seeing is coming up a little later than normal. We usually see that in the chicane, but that speed's measured way back on the exit right before the chicane. She had the best line through there, Martin. She was in fifth. Seventh best speed, and then those good lines in the bottom got her all the way to fourth. Fifth fastest start, fourth at the bottom. Look at the brakeman in the back there. Oh, taught well. Look at the little skid there. Curve, first curve. I like these transitions here. You aren't even seeing the articulation of the sled. Look how quiet yeah. she lets it go there. She's not steering either. No, no, no <laughs> friction in the air. No friction there. <laughs> Graham Richardson the videoing. One of the Canadian coaches, he's ready for Christine De Brown, silver medalist here last year, one of two silver medals in the breakout year for the now 30-year-old Canadian. World Cup debutante, Dawn Richardson-Wilson on the brakes. Well, if there's anybody could challenge for the top three, this is the one right here. So Christine had a really rocking year last year. Started it off with a good run in the Olympic Games in Pyeongchang and just carried on that form. Hit the Worlds. Yeah. Ended up with a bronze medal in the World Championships. Nice smooth transition, boy. Nice. This is one of two tracks he claimed a silver medal on last year. The other one was Altenburg. Two real drivers tracks. Now she needs to be clean here. Watch the runner tips. Steering? No, straight. 400's in it. This She's is got really the speed, close. too. She's, gonna She's be got the speed. Right in with Mariami Amanka and Down Kim Kalicki. Should be green numbers at the finish. She should catch him. In a whisker. Yes. Takes the lead. On the bottom. In the hat with the beers. Looking you know, happy with that. It's hard. As I always say, you can't gain time on the way down. You can only lose time. Yeah. Considering it's a gravity sport and you're starting everything. But on this track, you can find time on the bottom. This is only the third race for the break woman. And in her two previous races in North America's Cup here in November, she was crashed in both of them by Cynthia Appiah. So this is her first trip down this track without a crash. In a race. Yes. Great lines, the runner tips, nothing. No skid into the heart. Leader. There you go, Christine De Bruyne, De Brown. She says De Bruyne, her husband Evo says De Brown. But, you know, what are you going to do? Christine De Bruyne leads by 300s from Kim Kalicki and six from Mariama Yamanka, the World Olympic champion. Ten sleds down. We have three to go in the first heat of the Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. Martin Haven, John Morgan, trackside in Lake Placid as Lubov Czernik gives the sled a little massage and a pat. Her eighth World Cup start, the 24-year-old rookie who burst onto the World Cup scene last year. She's the junior European champion. Her, and her brakeman's been around a long time, very yeah. experienced. 21st World Cup start for Julia Schockschwever on the back handles. Start. 573. Seventh best. Now up here, this is where you tend to make a little bit of a mental error as a rookie. And bang on the right. Good correction there. Came straight into four. 
He showed five. All sorts of potential six, last year, Lubov Chanik. Seven. And watch these eight. Watch these transitions here. Nice. That's where her teammate crashed. Yeah. 112, seven. That's pretty good. Kilometer down to the best. Seventh place at the start. Still seventh on the splits. She's nice. She got through there pretty clean. Now she may catch Nadjez to say give her, her more experienced teammate who's currently in sixth position. Six fastest speed. Is she going to get there? Will she be the top Russian? Will she be ahead of Katy Bile? She is ahead of Katy Bile. Six hundreds behind Nadjez Six hundreds Sagan. behind her teammate. Yep. But her teammate beat her by ten hundreds at the start. Yep. So a pretty good rookie uh, debut here, this young Russian. So Chernik, last year her first World Cup season. That's now her eighth World Cup race. She didn't do the entire season last year. Missed out on the races in uh, St. Moritz. Good technique. Brakeman in and down and right in the position that you don't want to see the Brakeman at all. Good exit out of Shady. Into the 11, 12, 13 combination, the labyrinths. Every track has to have one of those three quarter combinations. Here in Lake Placid, it's signature. Now then, 119 at World Cup starts, 118 of them for Canada. This is the very first for the USA for double Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys. Lauren Gibbs in the back, the silver medalist with Alana Myers. Look at the starts. Well, that's a 55, 1300 lead. Only her fifth trip in this BMW sled. She told me, I'm pretty sure four trips she had in it when she talked to me last night. Does she feel comfortable? Sorta. Yeah. Work in progress, I think, but this is a hugely talented driver, way most experienced in the Huge field. Huge lead here on the exit of Shady. She's had more World Cup wins this than is the late. rest of the field have started. That was high and late. Well, you know, she has to get acclimated to the sled. Still in the green. 1900s lead. It's dropped a little bit from the shady exit point. The speed, second best speed. She's going to lead at the line. Single digits, probably seven or eight hundreds. Ahead of her former teammate, Christine eight. De Bruyne, by nine hundreds of a second. Lost time on the bottom to De Bruyne. You see some weather coming in here, but it's not affected because the track's covered. Yep. In pa oh, past years, that would be a big effect in the chicane. What they've done here with the roof and the track is turned into some spectacular facility. Kaylee had the season off last year. She got engaged, got married, started training a whole different way, changed nations, but she has not lost her touch. Well, you know, when you win two gold medals and then the third Olympics win a bronze, you sort of acquire a technique and a talent. All right, here we go then. This is Stephanie Schneider, bronze medalist in the last two World Cup races here. She also has two wins on this track. Martin, we're, we're pushing so Sandra Kiriasis. We're so far off the start record by two tenths. Things are pretty sticky up there, but this could be the, a really good start here, low 50s. Lizette Turner behind her makes her there return for the 62. first time in two and a half seasons. Schneider's had a love hate with all the North American tracks. <laughs> with most tracks, actually, yeah. including Altenburg. And, you know, she's coming off a lot of collarbone, shoulder injuries, crashed out of the World Championships. 43rd World Cup race for Stephanie Schneider, two, 22 as a break woman. She's had two wins here with Sandra Kiriasis back in 29, 2009, 2010. Whoa, a little high. I said she crashed out. She didn't crash out. She got second the year before she crashed out of the World Cup. You know, she's got all the talent. She's just been facing some injuries during the course of the season that's prevented her from dominating. Fourth, 1300s back. Oh, she's a hundredth behind Kim Kalicki. Wow, and they have to race off those two. And, they're both and there's ahead another. Of yeah, the Yamanka has made it already qualified for the World Championships. Yes. <laughs> These two German sleds and a couple others have to race off Christmas to New Year's for the other two spots into the Altenburg World Championships. And I didn't give Kalicki a chance looking at the 
Look at the practice well, time. rookie with only four wow. full runs down the track. And she's Why the best German you? after one. What will we bet on that? You know, and but of course, she Kalicki went early. You know, the track, you know, it's had a lot of skeleton sleds down, bobsleds, had that crash. So maybe the track, we'll see what happens in the second run. Yeah. She'll, she'll go ahead of Kalicki. Well, Kalicki. Three Germans in a row. Kalicki, Third, fourth, and fifth. Kalicki Schneider, a new young driver we've never seen in World Cup. Laura Nolte, she's in the hunt as well. The but, Germans are separated by three hundreds. But our first heat leader, it's a familiar name. The colors have changed, but not much else has. Are you surprised, Mark? No, I'm not surprised. Not a whole lot, I you have know? to say. Kaylee Guess who has, has the best start time in the race? Kelly Humphreys. Won on this track two years ago with Melissa Lotholt. Can she return to claim her first ever win for the USA? I'm sure that took a lot of weight off her too. to come down though. She's the leader. I've done this before. It doesn't matter what country I'm with, I can win. She's won four times here, including the World Championships in 2012. Kaylee Humphreys leads. It's a slender lead over Christine De Bruyne. Look at and this then the German Germans championship together, there. <laughs> covered by 300s. Wow, Mariami Amanka, the third of them. Brittany Reinbold in the top six ahead of Martina Fontenev. And another battle within the battle. Segeva versus Chernik for the best Russians. And the two Chinese sliders just a couple of hundreds apart and a hundredth behind Cassie Beil as well. So lots to conjure with in the second heat. And that comes up soon. 13.30 local, that's 10.30 Eastern. 18.30 Greenwich Mean Time. So we'll be back on action uh, on track with the Slesian action in just a fraction over 20 minutes. Time to put the kettle on, make a coffee, or in our case, run next door and grab a cup of soup. So the first heat sees Kaylee Humphreys in unfamiliar territory, but still at the top of the leaderboard. Join John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, with the IBSF TV crew for all the action in heat two. We'll be back in 20 minutes. Oh, <laughs> no!